Hey everyone, it's Steve. We're back with part two of SketchUp tutorial for RC aircraft design. In our first video, we went over the basic tools that are up in SketchUp by default. And in this one, we are going to modify our toolbars and add a few extensions that allow us to have some extra control and extra ability to draw the proper shapes we need for our RC aircraft. So if you missed the first video and need to check out the basics of SketchUp, go ahead and click the link down below the video for part one, and then come back for part two everybody else let's go ahead and get started alright so we've gone over the basic tools in part one what we need to do now is expand that to have just a few extra tools that are in, in SketchUp by default and then we're gonna go ahead and add a couple of add-ons that are third-party add-ons that make it very useful so the first thing that I like to do is the getting started toolbar is great but there are a few items that I like to use that are actually not included on this toolbar so to get at those we're gonna go up to view down to toolbars and that'll bring up our option for selecting which toolbars are visible and there's a lot in here that are by default there's a couple I've already added uh, from other extensions that I've hidden for our videos so, but you'll see most of these by default before even adding anything so the getting started toolbar is what we looked at last time what I'm wanting to add is the large tool set that includes everything that's in the getting started but it adds a few more so we want to go ahead and click on that and you'll see up here it's duplicated uh, the toolbar or what looks like it's duplicated but it's also added some additional features up on top here so this bottom one is our getting started the top one is our large toolbar set now we don't need to see both of these because it's doubling up tools so we're gonna go ahead and uncheck the getting started and that will just leave us with this tool set but while we're here I also like to go ahead and add the views toolbar you'll see that pops up this little toolbar over here that uh, looks like a bunch of different views of a house and uh, we'll go ahead and just look at what that does. So for now, let's go ahead and close this. So we're back at our screen, but we've got our advanced toolbars. Now you can move these around to customize it however you like. You can even pull them out and have them be floating toolbars or bring them back in. So feel free to customize that in any way you like. Uh, as I get going with uh, SketchUp, I start getting more and more toolbars, so I tend to slide them around quite a bit or I have some floating so I can turn them on and off. It's completely a personal preference in how you get used to using the program. So let's go ahead and start with this view one that we added. Uh, that's a very nice one for jumping around in your in your views when you're trying to work with an object um, and you need to see it from different angles. So they kind of show them, uh, you can kind of tell from this the orientation of the picture what they're going to do. So right now we're kind of in just a free floating mode. I'm using the orbit tool to bounce around. But uh, if you jump on this, it's called what's, what's what's called the perspective view, and that'll go to kind of a three-quarter angle kind of you know view to give you a, a good perspective view. But if you want to work with something from a certain angle or edge and axis, you need to use some of these other toolbars. So it's a lot easier to jump around up here than to go into your view, or I'm sorry, your camera, your standard views, and go to these. So say we want to look top down at our model the great thing is we can just click this and it'll give us a top down view same thing for straight on from the right the back and the left so this is really you know useful for when needing to jump around to these different viewpoints and to get exactly on an axis all right so we also added the large toolbar set and that added a lot of icons that weren't included in the getting started toolbar we're not going to go over all of them but there's a few I want to highlight that may help you in drawing your aircraft so the first one over here in the object area is the freehand tool what this will do is if you click and hold the mouse it'll actually follow your mouse and draw a line just freehanding like you would if you were just scribing a pencil on a piece of paper and once you get back to the line the starter line it will actually fill it in as a, a full object otherwise if you wanted to just rough sketch something you know you could have a line that you could use for a path or a shape or, or whatever your your purpose is another one that I find very useful is this dimension tool this is similar to the measuring tool except for it's gonna measure a di the distance of uh, two points and it'll leave a marker a reference point with that measurement so if we come over to our airplane and want to see you know what's our what are our dimensions here we can take a point on the airplane so I'm going to take this endpoint in the component click once and then I'm going to come over I want to try to do this straight so I want to find the opposite component we're going to click that endpoint 
and then it'll draw a line out and we can see that this is just a hair over 30 inch wingspan airplane. We can do that the same on any other object. We can try to grab the front of the airplane to the back of the airplane, drag that down and find out that that's 26 uh, and 1764. All right, uh, another useful thing that gets added here is within our zoom, we have, we went over some of the zoom tools. This is a zoom to extents, which is gonna go, it's gonna try to include everything in our window, but if, if we just wanna zoom to a specific area, you now have this kind of zoom to area tool. So you can drag a box around items, say I wanna just look at that tail, and it'll zoom into just that tail. All right, there are also a few tools that aren't included in SketchUp that I find useful for drawing RC aircraft. So what I recommend first doing is going and locating the Sketchucation plugin. And you can do that by simply going to <coughs> sketchucation.com. You'll need to sign up uh, for an account. I've already done that. And then you can download their plugin store download. And this is an add-in to SketchUp that will allow you to automatically uh, download, search and download tools from their, uh, their site that you can then add into SketchUp. So you see we've got the Sketchcation tools downloaded. And to install that, what we need to do is come into SketchUp, go up to your window tool, or your window menu, go down to Preferences, and that will open up uh, the System Preferences. Now there's this Extensions tab in here, and you'll see I've already got some added in. What we want to do is go to Install Extension. And I've already got it going to my Downloads folder. So you can go ahead and find find where it downloaded or, or uh, you know where you specifically put it. And select this RBZ file. This is a Ruby script that SketchUp uses for add-ons. So we want to go ahead and select that. Click Open. Now it's going to warn you it does have the ability to access file system on your computer. So you know do this, un understand that it's going to make some changes to your computer. All right. It's pretty quick and easy. Now we see we've got this uh, sketchcation icon over here. You can go ahead and add this to your toolbars if you want, or you can hide it. And always come and find that under Plugins, Sketchcation. So since this isn't something I actively use in drawings, I actually drag it out and I just close that. Because what I'll do is I'll come up here and go into Sketchcation. Then we can come into the plugin store. Now, like I said, you'll need to. to um, have a uh, username and password with the site. So you'll want to log in. All right, now that we have the Sketchucation plugin installed, uh, you can go ahead and find it by going to Plugins and Sketchucation and Plugin Store. What this will do is it'll bring up a nice interface that we can search for. Now, you'll notice on a lot of these that I recommend, they do have an auto installer. It doesn't always work well with my version, but I've seen it work well with the free version. So. I'm going to show you how to search for them. You can auto install them, but I'm also going to show you how you can install them manually. So the first one we need to get is a uh, li uh, plugin library that will help us install some of our others. So we're going to go look for Fredo 6. And that's going to bring up this Fredo 6 additional plugin folders. So like I said, in the free version, you can go ahead and click auto install, and that should automatically install these for you. Otherwise, we can also go to more info, and it'll bring up a web page that brings us to the uh, the plugin. And this will tell us all about it. And over here, there is a download link. We'll come back to SketchUp, and let's uh, go to Preferences, Extensions, Add Extensions. And now we have this additional plugin folders. Let's go ahead and click that. And here we get the uh, confirmation that the additional extensions have been installed. All right, now that we've got that installed, let's go ahead and look for one of the tools we're looking for. And I'm looking for a Bezier spline. So go ahead and search for that. Okay, now that we've found the one we're looking for, we're looking for this Fredo 6 Bezier spline. You can either uh, try the auto install that should work for you and get a confirmation that it installed, or we can go to more info that should bring up the. Uh, Sketchucation web page, and I'll warn you, you're going to have to have ads turned on for this. They have a, a, a ad block detector that it won't let you download if you have ads turned off. So um, make sure that's turned on. And you can read what this tool does. And down at the bottom, we can actually download it. 
Now here again they're recommending that you auto install the plugin, but that might not be working for you. So what you want to look for is either the RBZ file, which you can use the extension manager, or we can go into the plugins folder and drop the files direct. But uh, the extension manager works best, so let's go ahead and download the RBZ tool, the Ruby script. I'll jump back into SketchUp, go into Window and Preferences, Extensions. Want to install install an extension, and again, just locate the uh, the tool we're looking for. Here is the Bezier spline. Double click on that. It's going to give us a warning about uh, writing files, and it should bring up this confirmation that it is complete. And now you have another toolbar. So the uh, by default it's floating here. Go ahead and drag it up into your toolbar area, and uh, when adjusting these, if you drag up or down while holding the mouse. It'll add an additional line, or if it fits on the first one, it'll do that as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and drop this down here. So this adds a bunch of options for Bezier splines. We're really just going to be working with the first one in our initial uh, drawings. All right, another extension that you'll find very handy is what's called FreeDXF. And DXF is a, a document exchange format that uh, a lot of people use with CAD, especially AutoCAD, will uh, have DXF, DWG files and being able to import those is very handy. Now SketchUp doesn't do that by default with the free version. The pro version does have one, but there is a decent DXF importer. So if you search for free DXF and scroll down and find the Jim free DXF importer. Now again, go ahead and try the auto install. I'm going to go to the more info and see if we have a manual download for this one. And we do. So we've got this uh, attachment here. So let's go ahead and download that, jump back into SketchUp, go to our window, preferences, we're going to install extension and locate our free DXF. And that should, yep, have popped up down here in our plugins. And so this will be handy. Uh, you can often find airfoils in a DXF format or uh, if people are sharing plans or drawings with you, you can go ahead and use this to import them. All right, those are the only tools we need to add for now to get started in uh, drawing a simple flat plate airplane. So uh, as we go along, I'll uh, add in some more plugins and I will talk about them as we get to them. But for now, we're ready to start drawing. So we're going to go ahead and do that in video three. I hope you found these first two videos informative and, and uh, a good overview of how to start get started in SketchUp. And we'll, uh, we'll expand now, jumping into the real meat of it, of uh, starting to draw our airplanes. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down in the uh, comments field below. I always appreciate a thumbs up, and uh, definitely, if you want to keep track of these videos and more, go ahead and subscribe. So, until next time, have fun drawing, and we'll be back shortly with part three.